I'll play the entire film in a moment, but first I want to give a little context so it makes more sense and you can understand what's really going on. This remarkable short film from the mid-1950s was made at an important moment in American history. For over a hundred years, railroads had undeniably driven the growth of our country, but now there were oncoming threats, trucking and airplanes. It's no accident the year this film was made, 1956, the Eisenhower Interstate Highway System was authorized, and the railroads knew there would soon be efficient highways connecting the nation's major cities, which would then be filled with trucks. And just as bad, airplanes were flying more people than ever. And although trucks aren't mentioned often, they are the giant elephant in the room, but only show up a couple times like in this clip. And Rush, to haul the same load carried by one big freight train, would take a convoy of heavy trucks ten miles long. Just one train, mind you. And about 15,000 freight trains are on the move every day. While trucks aren't more efficient in the absolute sense, they are more flexible and need much less planning and scheduling to move goods around. Trains and trucks can work together, or be competitors. But I guess the railroads thought they needed to boost their image and get railroads back into the minds of people before they were made completely irrelevant. You can hear what almost sounds like near panic in the railroad owners' voices speaking through the characters. The welfare of the nation depends on the railroads. I wonder just how many people up and down all the main streets realize that. But what makes this film really different, unlike the hundreds of other industrial films that I've watched, is that almost none of the dialogue is delivered in the usual very direct rah-rah American industry kind of way, with the strong, stern voice of that mid-century film narrator. There is some of that, but if you pay attention, it's actually something happening in the imagination of one of the characters. While this film does deliver a steady dose of facts and figures, it does it in a completely indirect way, where the characters play roles of people knowledgeable or ignorant of railroads, and the play between them is where the knowledge is dropped. Yes, it's a bit awkward and forced at times, but everything considered, I think it's about as smooth as anyone could make it. Also, notice how footage or imagery is carefully and casually sneaked in. If it weren't for railroads, how would you move large equipment across the country? Like that, for instance. Or something that size. I know virtually nothing about dramatic techniques, but even I can see how cleverly different devices are used to deliver the intended message. And it's no wonder... The guy who wrote the screenplay was twice nominated for Academy Awards, even though he only ever wrote a handful of scripts. As you watch the railroad plea for relevance through the mouthpieces of our actors, you get a certain 1950s flavor you'd never get today, like lots of indoor smoking like the film is a cigarette ad. Female objectification. Back on track one, boys. <laughs> Animal poking and whipping. And even scandalous sexual innuendo. Kelly... Did you know that 4,500... Oh, Scotty, not tonight. Well, now, figures don't lie. Why, thank you, Scotty. Good night, Kelly. The railroads, while indeed still vitally important to our nation, have lost this contest, and about 70% of America's goods are moved by truck now, and airplanes carry the vast majority of passengers. Though I do love passenger trains when they make sense to take. With the coming of electric self-driving trucks, I imagine there'll be even more pressure on the railroads. This channel is all about not only building and making things, but also understanding how and why things were important and how these things have changed over time. By putting things like this film in historical context, it gains much more meaning and you can come away with a different understanding than if you didn't have that background. If you like that sort of thing, please subscribe and stick around. Also, I'd love to hear what you think about the film and railroads in general in the comments. Anyway, if you can get past the necessarily forced dialogue and sometimes awkward acting, this short is a joy and contains truly beautiful vintage footage of our nation's railways. From the opening credits showing railroads feeding a gleaming modern city, to Kelly's dancing at the end, this film is a noteworthy reminder of this moment in rail history. Say, you know, I've been thinking about that remark you made a few minutes ago. About railroads being overrated? Yes. Oh, don't get me wrong. I know that they've been important, oh. at least in the past. But this is a modern age. And oh, maybe... and I suppose railroads aren't modern. Well, maybe I don't know enough about railroads. Maybe. You and a lot of other people. Pick it up, Kelly. Okay. Anyway, stick around. You might find it interesting. I will.
Scotty's? Not today. Promised my wife I'd eat home for a change. Miss all the latest news. Uh-huh, and arguments. Well, see ya. Say hello to Kelly for me. Say, pardon me. Yeah? I'm looking for a joint of some sort around here called Scotty's. Uh, can you uh, tell me where it is? Yeah. I can tell you something else, too, mister. Don't let Kelly hear you call Scotty's a joint. Kelly? Who's Kelly? On the hill and to the right. You can't miss it. Oh, and say hello to Kelly for me. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hiya, Rod. Hi. Hi. Hi, Johnny. Change, Kelly. Change, Kelly. I must be getting old. I keep hearing echoes. Did you get your message on the board, George? Yeah, I saw it when I came in. Good. 85, 90 a dollar. Thanks a lot, okay. George. But you're Kelly. Well, you wouldn't want to bet with me. I happen to know. I might have guessed it. What'd you say? Uh, well, um, I was looking for a superintendent named Paul Todd. I was told I'd probably find him in here. Well, no, he's not here now, but he usually comes in about this time. Oh, well, I guess I'll wait then. All right. Uh, could I trouble you for a cup of coffee? Trouble? I brought you some more coffee, Kelly. Oh, good. Hey, how about a cup of coffee, huh? Good and hot, easy on the cream, heavy on the sugar. No trouble at all. Russ! How about those twins of yours? I've been saving a page one spot for the news, you know. <laughs> Any day now. Hey, Bill. Yeah? What's all this about? Oh, well, that's all I know about it. Just what it says there. Hey, you got a cigarette? Oh, thanks. I understand they've already had a program on steel, one on automobiles, and on railroads. That I want to see. Well, thanks, Pete. Well, why not? After all, what's more important to the welfare of people and business than the railroads? Sure. But how can they tell the story of the railroads in one program? Maybe with six, but one? Ugh. I've been talking railroading to my wife for 20 years. I haven't repeated myself once. Uh, not funny? Ugh. Not funny. Well, what's so hard? I got all they need for a TV show. Look, every hour, 1,000 trains leave somewhere for somewhere. 4,500 carloads of freighter shipped. 4,500 are received. 15,000 railway express shipments are handled. 1,300,000 pounds, pounds of U.S. mail. Yeah, every hour. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty, you and your facts and figures. Yeah, well, it comes easy after listening to you guys for 15 years. <laughs> hey, Arf. Oh, thank you. Say, uh, what's all the fuss about? Fuss? What fun? You never rode this. Well, you mean it's always like this in here? Oh, this. You should be here when they start discussing baseball. Or better yet, Congress. Like I was telling my brother-in-law from Detroit. Oh, I forgot your spoon. Back on track one, boys. <laughs> like I was telling my brother-in-law from Detroit. Sure, I said. Automobiles are mighty important. But how would they make them if it wasn't for the tons of steel the railroads hauled to your factory? Yeah, 25,000 tons a day, along with 450,000 square feet of plate glass, 900,000 pounds of copper, and... Oh, sorry, Russ. Why well, pick autos? Bill? Hey, sorry. How would you make anything without railroads? Refrigerators, breakfast food, airplanes, you name it. Here are. Tell me, don't you get tired of railroad talk in here all the time? No, I like it. Why? Oh, just curious. You see, I'm not a railroad man. Oh, not really. So maybe it's hard for me to swallow all this talk about how important railroads are. After all, almost everything I buy seems to be delivered to my house by truck. Mm -hmm. After it's first been hauled by railroads about a hundred or a thousand miles. Change, Kelly. Excuse me. Who's the city boy, Bill? Never saw him before. Maybe they ought to put a memory genius like Scotty on this TV show. <laughs> hey, how about that? Oh, he's only kidding, Scotty. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe some MC fella gets me up there and asks me questions about the railroads. Tries to stop me, see? Might be terrific. I'll take wrestling. <laughs> Maybe they'll call me the human encyclopedia. Oh, brother. 
how much railroad track in the nation maybe this fellow has? Right off, I tell him, nearly 400,000 miles. How much freight do the railroads haul? More tons of freight, more miles than all other forms of transportation put together. How much taxes do the railroads pay in a year? One billion, two hundred and fifty million dollars. How much does it cost to haul a ton of freight a mile by railroads? Averages less than a cent and a half. You can't stop me, you see? Then maybe he turns to the studio audience and he says, Anybody in the audience got a question to ask? Yes, I have. What happened to those ham and eggs I ordered? <laughs> coming up, coming up. But don't forget, these are hauled by the railroads too. Yes, I know. You know, maybe Scotty's got something there. On that 400,000 miles of track business, I mean. Or built, paid for, and maintained by the railroads. Don't forget that. And with every mile of line, you got a cash investment of $110,000. Don't forget that. And maybe that's the story this TV program ought to tell. Suppose you took just one moment. You showed the people what's happening on the railroad tracks of the nation in a single moment. That'd be something, wouldn't it? And see the headline. Editor turns TV producer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, but look. Now maybe you have this fellow as he's sort of a... Well, sort of a narrator. While he talks, you show pictures of what's happening along the 400,000 miles of track. Maybe he'll start off by saying, right at this moment, right while you're thinking about it. At this moment, as in every moment of America's history, the wealth of the nation lies dispersed far and wide throughout a vast continent. To make this reservoir of wealth useful, Huge quantities of raw materials must be moved regularly to the centers of production. Finished goods must move freely to the marketplaces of the nation and the world. In the endless and indispensable movement of materials and goods, the greatest role is that played by the railroads of America. At this moment, the railroads are hauling the food products on which the health and vitality of the nation depend. are moving the endless variety of raw materials which the industries of the nation will refine, convert, fabricate, process, and manufacture. carrying the finished products of industry and agriculture which the people of the world will buy, sell, and use.
the welfare of the nation depends upon its railroads. The welfare of the nation depends on the railroads. I wonder just how many people up and down all the main streets realize that. And Russ, to haul the same load carried by one big freight train would take a convoy of heavy trucks 10 miles long. Just one train, mind you. And about 15,000 freight trains are on the move every day. Nice and cold, Scotty. Tell you what I wouldn't mind them showing on TV. Especially for those people who never think much about railroads. If it weren't for railroads, how would you move large equipment across the country? Like that, for instance. Or something that size. As long as you're talking about the hauling jobs the roads do, how about mail? About 90% of all intercity mail is carried by the railroad. And what's more, Uncle Sam paid the railroads less to move that 90% and it cost them to move the remaining 10. And don't forget Express. The railroads pick up and deliver over 350,000 Express packages a day. Kelly, how about another cup of coffee? Oh, sure. Say, you know, I've been thinking about that remark you made a few minutes ago. About railroads being overrated? Yes. Oh, don't get me wrong. I know that they've been important, oh. at least in the past. But this is a modern age. And oh, maybe... and I suppose railroads aren't modern. Well, maybe I don't know enough about railroads. Maybe. You and a lot of other people. Pick it up, Kelly. Okay. Anyway, stick around. You might find it interesting. I will. You know, there's another story they could put on TV. See you later. So long, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> about all the advances the railroads have made. Correction. Are making all the time. At a cost of over a billion dollars a year. And all their own dough. I mean, private capital. Today you've got more tonnage moving in a single train, faster movement of freight. Why? Why? A whole fistful of reasons. And I'll tell you one of them. Power. Take the new diesels. They've speeded up switching and train makeup operations. And at this moment, new diesel power is pulling greater tonnage trains than ever before. And pulling freight at passenger train speeds, too. Diesels are hauling three-quarters of the nation's rail traffic. And even newer types of power are being tested all the time. Right along with the new motive power, you can talk about the advances in air brakes. Added power made faster, heavier trains possible. Advances in air brakes make it practical. The force it takes to stop a freight train going 60 miles an hour would be enough to lift that whole train 10 stories in the air. That's a lot of force. How many people realize that with a simple movement of a single lever, an engineer can put that kind of force into action? With just one lever, he has complete and positive control of the longest and heaviest freight train on the steepest grade. Because of air brake improvements, even the fastest train loads of livestock or fragile merchandise can be brought smoothly and swiftly to a stop without injury or damage. But power and brakes are only part of the story. Why, today trains run with greater regularity and dependability, yet with greater safety than ever before, because of the big advances made in the signal systems. With today's modern systems, trains can automatically control signals behind them. Following trains get an immediate and clear picture of conditions ahead. The wayside signals are duplicated in locomotive cabs. Regardless of outside conditions, the engine man always has a clear vision of the signals which ride with him in the cab. Nowadays, two-way train traffic can move with greater speed and safety over single-track systems than ever before. Why? Because train traffic can be handled by signals over hundreds of miles of track from a remote tower by a single man. Lights show the location of every train. By simply flipping levers, he can put trains on sidings. And allow others to move by in the opposite direction on the main line.
to train movements? Safer. I wonder how many folks know why. Well, Bill, there's this to be said. New communication methods are doing a lot to speed up train movement. Eliminate delays and increase safety. Okay, Dick. Flagman's back on. Right. Eastbound 9696 to eastbound 9541. Okay, eastbound 9541. Everything looks good. Okay, 9694. Putting you on a siding at Quentin. Conductor 9604 to Great Tower. Cattle on the track. Had to stop a mile south of Crooks Road. Just another example of modern methods the railroads use. You're right there, Bill, and what's well, more... There's more to the story why freight shipments are moving faster today. Right at this moment, improved systems for classifying cars. Freight cars can be classified at the rate of one every 12 seconds by a single operator in a tower. He pushes various speed selector buttons and retarders grip freight wheels with the exact amount of pressure to slow the car down to the speed the operator selects. It's a long story, the story of the advancing rails. I'll say it's a long story. Yeah, and it could go on, too, about rails, roadbeds, and routes. The new rails you have today are heavier, sturdier, and made of better metal. And the new roadbeds being put down. How much faster they're made. How much faster rails are being laid because of modern mechanized equipment. New rails, new roadbeds, new track laying methods. Grades reduced, sharp curves eliminated, so that goods and people move more smoothly, safely, and faster than ever before. This TV program ought to have the story on modern passenger service. How many people know that they can enjoy the same comfort on trains as in their own living rooms? And the same kind of safety, too. forget the number of purchases the railroads make either. All the things it takes to give the public modern transportation service. How many items, Scotty? Oh, nearly a hundred thousand different items from manufacturers and suppliers in over 12,000 cities and towns. The bill amounts to almost seven million dollars a day. And that's all railroad though. No subsidies, no tax money. Bill, shall I tell him you call him back? Oh, no, I'll be right there. Any way you look at it, it's a tough story to tell in half an hour. And I don't envy the guy who's got the job. All no, right, Say, I'm sorry about Paul Todd. He's usually here. Oh, that's quite all right. I enjoyed the wait. <laughs> you know, maybe you want to see this new TV show the boys have been talking about. You think it'll be any good? Yeah. <laughs> well, I sure hope so. I hope so, too. Twenty-five, fifty a dollar. Thanks a lot, and stop back again sometime. Well, thank you. I might surprise you and do just that. at 4,500... Oh, Scotty, not tonight. Well, now, figures don't lie. Why, thank you, Scotty. Good night, Kelly. Tonight, we bring you another in a series of public service programs featuring the American private businesses upon which our whole way of living depends. This is a story which begins in the research centers and laboratories of railroads, railroad associations, universities, engineering societies, and in the research facilities of thousands of suppliers and manufacturers. This is the story of the advancing rails.
It's an important story, for no matter who you are, where you are, or what you do, the railroads influence your life and the way you live. Tonight we present the story of the nation's railroads, a story happening at this moment. Hey, that fella's face looks mighty familiar. It should. Isn't that the fellow who was having coffee here a couple of weeks ago when we were off? That's talking? him. And if you ask me, he's a wise guy. Hey, look, Bill. They're doing just what you were talking about. Look at that. As a private business, the railroads welded the continent into a nation, helped little shops become large factories, small towns become cities, linked every community with every other community. The welfare of other businesses and the welfare of the nation's people have and always will depend heavily upon the railroads continuing to operate as a private business, continuing to advance, continuing with these advances and as private businesses to help keep the nation prosperous in times of peace, strong in times of emergency. Under a free and enterprising system of business operation, the railroads can serve you best at this moment and as they work on through every moment of every day and night. guy that program's good Kelly I hope you find the TV program as good as I found your coffee and Irish advice John O'Shea well kind of a nice wise guy anyway <laughs> 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 